In this video, I'll go over setting up Synology Drive Server using DDNS and port forwarding for remote access. To begin, I'll first create a non-administrator user account that I'll be setting up to access Synology Drive a little later in the video. I'll do this by bringing up Control Panel, select User and Group, click Create, then run through the User Creation Wizard, selecting the default options that are provided. Next, I'll bring up the Package Center, then search for and install Synology Drive Server along with these additional packages that are automatically installed with Synology Drive Server. This took a few minutes to complete in my setup. Once the Synology Drive package is done installing, I'll bring up the main menu and launch the Synology Drive Admin Console, which brings up this pop-up window regarding security enhancements for the newly installed package and the need to refresh the web page. I'll click Yes to proceed, then I'll bring up the Synology Drive Admin Console once again, and I'll get this welcome window providing information on the Synology Drive suite. I'll then click through the various message windows to get to the Synology Drive Admin Console. Now I'll enable the My Drive Team folder, which provides each user a Synology Drive folder within their home directories. I'll do this by selecting My Drive, then click Enable. Next, I'm presented with this window, letting me know that I'll need to enable the user home service, so I'll click Yes to proceed. This brings up the User and Group Control Panel, where I'll scroll down to the User Home section, enable the User Home service, then click Apply. Now I'll close the Control Panel window. Click OK on this versioning window, leaving everything as default, and OK again on this informational window regarding team folders privileges. The next thing I'll do is create a team folder that multiple users can share. To do this, I'll click on the Folders link, which brings up the Shared Folder control panel. Here, I'll click Create to start up the Shared Folder creation wizard, name the folder Users Share, Click Next through the remaining windows, and finally, assign read-write permissions to the user account that was created earlier, then click Apply. I'll close the control panel, then refresh the team folder window. Now the user share team folder is available within the Synology Drive admin console, so I'll select the folder, then click Enable. I'll then click OK on this versioning window, and again on this team folder informational window to finish things up. Now I'll get to setting up remote access to the Synology Drive server by first setting up DDNS. I'll do this by bringing up Control Panel, External Access, then click on DDNS. Here I'll click Add and for Service Provider, I'll select Synology. I'll enter in a host name I'd like to use. Click on the Sign In To or Sign Up For A Synology Account link and log in with my Synology account. I'll then enable the Get A Certificate from Let's Encrypt and set it as default checkbox and test the connection to make sure everything is set up properly. The test came back as normal, so I'm all set and I'll click OK to finish up the DDNS setup and OK again on this Certificate Information window. Now the web server will restart and when done, DDNS will be ready. The next thing I'll do is set up port forwarding on my router, and here are the rules that are specifically needed for remote access to Synology Drive Server. Ports 5000 and 5001 are used to access Synology Drive through a web client, and port 6690 is set up for file syncing, which is used when setting up a Synology Drive desktop client. I'll cover accessing both a little later in the video. Synology Drive Server also requires ports 80 and 443 if you are planning to do link sharing, but I won't be covering link sharing in this video, so I won't be enabling these ports in my setup. One last thing I'd like to mention regarding routers is that you should be able to access your Synology Drive Server using the DDNS hostname that was assigned to it from a client on the same local or private LAN if your router supports hairpin NAT or NAT loopback. This router feature basically allows access to a service like Synology Drive Server 
using a public IP address or domain name from within the local or private LAN, eliminating the need to use different IP addresses for when the client switches between being local or remote. Now let's finish up the setup back in DSM. First, I'd like to create an alias to easily access Synology Drive, so I'll bring up the Login Portal Control Panel, select Applications, then Synology Drive, and click Edit. In the Alias box, I'll enter in Drive for the alias, and click Save. I'll also switch back to the DSM tab and enable the automatically redirect HTTP connection to HTTPS for DSM Desktop to make sure I'm always using HTTPS when connecting to Synology Drive and click Save. This triggers the web server to restart and when done, I get this warning message that the connection is in private. This is because the Let's Encrypt SSL certificate is valid only with the DDNS hostname that was set up earlier. So I'll update the URL and now DSM shows up properly once again. I should also be able to access the Synology Drive server through the web by first logging out of DSM as the administrator, add the drive alias to the URL, and log in with the user account that was created earlier. Now I'm able to access the My Drive folder and the User Share Team folder. I'll also copy a few files into each folder to confirm that both are working properly and it looks like everything is working fine. Next, I'd like to set up the Synology Drive client on my Windows 10 system. I can do that by logging into the Synology Drive web interface and use this link here to download the desktop client for Windows. I can also visit Synology's download center, which I'll link to in the description below, select the product type of NAS, search for my model, which is a DS920+, then under the Desktop Utilities category, download the Synology Drive client where I'll choose the Windows EXE version from this selection window. I'll then launch the installer and run through the setup, taking the default options along the way. At this point, I can start setting up the Synology Drive client by clicking on Start Now, which brings me to this Connect to your Synology NAS window. Here I'll enter in the DDNS hostname in the Synology NAS field, along with the username and password of the user that was set up earlier as well. I'll leave the Enable SSL Data Transmission Encryption checkbox as is and click Next. On this Choose the Type of Task window, I'll select Sync Task then click Next once again. On this Set up your Sync Folders window, I'll sync the User Share Team folder from the NAS by clicking on Change, select the Team folder, then the User Share listing, and click OK. For the folder location to sync on the computer, I'll click Change, and I'd like to set up the Sync folder on my desktop, so I'll select the Desktop listing, click on the New Folder button, to create a folder named Synology Drive, then I'll create another subfolder under the Synology Drive folder and rename it to User Share. I'll uncheck the Create an Empty Synology Drive folder because I don't want an additional subfolder to be created and click OK. I'll leave the Enable On Demand Sync to Save Disk Space on your computer checked and click Done. Now I'll just close the Synology Drive windows, bring up the Synology Drive folder, then navigate to the User Share subfolder, and we can see the files that were copied to the User Share team folder through the web client show up properly, confirming the setup was successful. Synology Drive server can also be set up using Synology's Quick Connect, which I covered in this video listed here on screen. Also, check out some of my other videos on Synology Drive listed here on screen as well. Lastly, if you'd like to support my work, check out the Support This Channel section in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.